Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best-selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. Everyone, this is Kathy Williams, and we are going to have a conversation today that was a request from a listener, and it's really about the power of curiosity. What does it mean to live in the question? And this is one of my very favorite topics. Um, uh, however, <laughs> I'm just settling in. It feels like I got here by the hair of my chinny chin chin, which hopefully is not very hairy, um, because usually we do this via an app and it just wouldn't open. So just kind of breathing and settling and we all have those moments where it's like time to just tap in and connect. So one of the questions I could ask if I were living in the question and curiosity is, okay, what action could I take right now to create that ease and calm I'm looking for? And then I kind of notice my hips in the chair, like settling down into gravity. I notice just the sounds around and I allow myself to, to relax into this moment. So hopefully you took a, a moment to relax and settle in the midst of your day as well. And um, I do love your questions. I love receiving them. I love receiving your requests for radio shows. So if you would like to send those on in, the place to go is meetkathywilliams.com. That's uh, M-E-E-T-K-A-T-H-Y Williams with an S. So W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S dot com. And that's where I am. That's where you can find uh, past radio shows. Last week we did a fun one that's called Confidence 101. And a couple of recent shows were also an allowance, that space of non-judgment where you can just uh, relax and receive life as it is. So um, those you can find there. And you, you can also always find the show at iom.fm. Uh, and you can hear live shows, you can hear replays, all at that website as well. So meetkathywilliams.com is also where you can get yourself a free money rain meditation and a create your life exercise. And I get a lot of feedback about, about those two things and uh, also about the energy pulls I do on YouTube. So if you've enjoyed those already, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't, I'm on YouTube, lots of videos and exercises there under Kathy Williams, public figure. I, I love posting little bitty tools, you know, quick things and um, all the goodies there on YouTube as well. So, uh, again, today's question was submitted by a listener, and I'm super grateful because then I don't have to come up with the topics. <laughs> uh, I'm being curious, like, what is living in the question? And she got the idea of living in the question from Access Consciousness, one of the 10 keys to total freedom that they talk about is uh, living in the question. And what does that even mean? Does it mean asking a lot of questions? Does it mean um, the, having a spirit of curiosity? And I would say it's both. If the questions are true questions, and it's like, what does that mean? True questions. Well, sometimes what we're asking is not even a question. Like, it could be a question, but it has no energy of curiosity behind it. Or it could be something that has 
so many conclusions in it that it's not actually a true question. And so what do I mean by that? Okay. So if I say to you, what's been going on between us for the past 24 hours? That has a lot of assumptions in it, right? It has the assumption that it, something is going on, it's between us, right? and it's been for the past 24 hours. Okay? So instead, that's not a true question. Right? A, a question would be, hey, is something going on between us? Yeah, is something going on between us? Because something could be going, something could be up in that person's world, but it may have nothing to do with you, right? And so or you could even ask, oh, is something up with you? You know, anything you want to talk about? Yeah. Different versus what's been going on between us for the past 24 hours, right? Full of assumptions, All right? Um, and then the the question or true question, but no curiosity behind behind it is, well, what else is possible? And do you see the do you sense the energy of that versus what else is possible? I wonder. A true question has an attitude of wonder. You don't have to say I wonder. And, and it could be a very quick question, but it has an energy of like, huh, what is there that I'm not aware of yet? Even what's your name, right? That's a question. Questions are really powerful because they open doors. Right? What's your name? Could open the door to a friendship. Yeah. Oh, what are your interests? Where do you work? Okay. Opening the door. Questions help create connections. They help us gather information. They open doors to beyond what we know. And one of my favorite little stories about questions is about um, the the man on Shark Tank. What's his name? Is it Kevin? Oh, I just totally lost the name. Um, He's the bald guy on Shark Tank, and and he said that he was with a friend, and the friend said, Kevin, you're asking a lot of questions. And he goes, who's the billionaire? You might want to be asking more questions, right? Like, questions helped expand what he knows, expand what he could create, and bring him more money. If you'd like to have more money, a question might be, hey, what could I add to my life that would bring me more money? <laughs> so living in the question is really about whenever we can, and it boxes us into either what we know or what we've heard or read about or been told, like boxes us into the known. Whereas asking a question opens the door to something beyond that known. Huh, what is possible here that I haven't thought of? What's available beyond this, right? Asking, inviting the universe to show us or inviting our own awareness to show us. I often talk about questions as though it's like, shining the flashlight of your awareness in a particular direction, right? You just, you're putting it in that direction, shining the light, which illuminates things, right? The light of your own awareness. And so through the course of the show today, we're gonna explore some different questions. Questions, we've already explored questions in relation to health. I'll show you, um, I'll share with you some other questions in relation to health and also how we can um, use questions for business, for relationship, um, and how we can use those four questions. What is this? What do I do with it? Can I change it? And how do I change it? Like if you get a yes, I can change it. How? What actions required? Yeah, what could I do differently? 
to change it. Sometimes we get, no, it can't be changed right now. Okay, cool. Is there a workaround? Is there something I haven't considered? Okay. All this sort of like exploratory um, attitude. Okay. An attitude of, huh, what else is there? I wonder what this is. You know, how can we change it? Um, and, and here's the thing, a lot of times when we're having something with our body, we think, we go to immediately, this shouldn't be here, which is a conclusion, and how do I get rid of it, right? Which is a question. <laughs> we, or we don't go to like, oh, what is this telling me? And let's say your right hip is bothering you. Oh, what's this showing me? Oh, this show is, and, and allow your awareness to bring that to mind. Oh, this is showing me that I played too much tennis last week and didn't do enough stretching. Or, oh, this is showing me that whenever I go talk with that friend, every time afterwards, it's my, my hip bothers me. So is that is that hers that I'm taking and trying to heal for her? Or is it, um, or is it that I really don't like interacting with her and my hip is showing me, like inviting you, whatever's going on with your body to actually give you information, right? As though it's a friend. And then you can possibly send it on its way and say goodbye. And instead of being like, no, this shouldn't be here. And what do I do to get rid of it? Like, what is the cancer telling me? What is the hip pain telling me? What is this? Right? Oh, this is something I can send back, I can send to the ground. Or, oh, this is showing me that I really don't like being in this relationship. And I'm trying to get out of it in the best way I know how. And creating an illness is that. You know, it's all about the curiosity of, like, nothing that's in my life is wrong. How can I use it to expand my awareness and create a different possibility? And that's the real energy of curiosity, inviting all of it to gift to you. Thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment talking about the power of curiosity. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. We have all read about or heard about becoming more spiritual, about working with our energy, the awakening, the shift, about being our authentic selves, living our purpose, reaching our true potential. The challenge doesn't lie in the knowledge, it lies in the execution. The struggle becomes connecting to that limitless self-healing part that each one of us has and gaining control of who we truly are. Hi, I'm Dr. Reverend Aisha Hogan, and you are invited to join me on a master's practice on Ohm Times, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard. Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance course. Kathy also travels, facilitating Radical Abundance and Access Consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. 
Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and we are having a conversation today about living in the question, the power of curiosity. And curiosity is truly amazing and a power that we're imbued with. Like, it's innate for us. As a child, you had it. And, you know, I want to talk for a moment about conditioning, like the conditioning that we have where maybe your parents uh, said, well, you ask too many questions, or why are you asking so many questions, or, you know, you're, you're being irritating or annoying, and like the wrongness that we step into in regards to questions, the ways we feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be asking. And, and in part, this can be related to asking for what we want, like mom just bought you pizza and a teddy bear and you just went to the park and you're asking for something else. And she's like, ah, I just did pizza and a teddy bear in the park, you know? And if you're a parent and you've done this, we've all done this, it's okay, right? <laughs> Sometimes we're just at the end of our rope where it's just like, oh my gosh, they're asking so much. And so um, we'll dive into a little bit about, you know, what we can do to, to reignite the question asker in us. And then right before we go there, let's just address like anywhere you are making you wrong for like shutting your child down or shutting a kid down for asking too many questions. Like what could we do instead? All right. So, one of the things that I've been doing recently is just flushing like a waterfall through my body, any negativity, clearing the, the water clears away any negativity, anything that doesn't belong to me, any projections and expectations, and it washes it out and allows it to go to the most appropriate place. I don't have to know where that is. So it's an energetic waterfall that clears and clarifies and releases all the points of view, all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, all of that um, that don't belong to us. So um, go ahead and just let that go through your, through your body now. Anywhere anyone's made you wrong for asking questions, anywhere you're still making yourself wrong for, for telling kids or anybody they shouldn't be asking questions. Just allow all of that to clear and cleanse away. Yeah. And as you do that, recognize that right here now, you are enough as you are. Okay? And you have the possibility of asking for anything and asking any question. And if somebody makes you wrong for it, it's really more about their story than it is about you. Okay? If you ask for strawberries on your salad and someone makes that wrong, it's really about their story. It's not about your ask. Okay. okay. So, you know, is. We, I did a whole show on judgment, and, and if you have been made wrong a lot, you may like to, and if you make yourself wrong, you may like to have a listen to that show. And then in the last week's show, Confidence 101, we touched on this man who, who was, um, went and asked for a hundred things, and, um, you know, with the aim of actually going through rejection, being okay with rejection, allowing himself to feel like, you know, the rejection wasn't the end of the world. And, and his TED Talk is 
is really fun and funny and and brilliant and and that's kind of sometimes what we have to do to start to flex our asking muscle right oh well i don't want to ask that person out i might be rejected like okay but you're certainly not increasing the possibilities of going out with them if you're unwilling to ask right so so asking um, regardless of, of that fear of rejection, right? So that's what he did. He, he went out and got a hundred no's because he realized he was so afraid of hearing no. He was so concerned that he would be rejected. So if you recognize that you've shut down your ass, You've stopped asking. You've stopped asking. Maybe, you know, we, we have so many reasons we stop asking. Asking for things and even asking for more clarification, right? In, in conversations, sometimes we need more clarity. We're acting as though we know what someone is talking about when we really might not, okay? And risking looking stupid, right? How many of us, uh, I'm in there. <laughs> didn't ask a question in school or in a workshop because we felt like, well, I should know this, right? Everyone else seems to be getting it, or I don't want, and, and I don't feel like I get it, or I don't want to look like or be the stupid person or the irritating person who asks a lot of questions. Would you be willing to risk that in order to learn, in order to grow? Because as we were talking about asking questions, that curiosity helps us grow and expand. It helps us invent, right? The, the Wright brothers were like, hey, what, what would we need in order to make a flying machine? Could, can we make people fly? What could we use? Hey, would this work? That didn't work. Okay, what else could work? Um, what's even lighter than that? What would work better than that? You know, that kind of innovating um, intelligence of, that is curiosity is so important. So I, I talked a little bit about questions in regard to health. Okay? Um, I have a program on my website. I, I think it's called, um, it's in the shop. It's called um, Five Days of Energetic Exercises for Projects, Business, and Creation. Something like that. Or maybe it's Five Days of Energetic Exercises for Creations. But people love it because it really is about asking your project. Okay, what day would you like to be on? Or what do you require? What kind of people can I add? What kind of energy? Do you require today? Um, are there any actions for me to take now? You know, that, that kind of interactive co-creation with the project, with the business, with the class, if you're creating a class, um, is shining your, the flashlight of your awareness in that direction. And amazing things can emerge. I had a woman, <laughs> she, she wrote me this, this comment about that class. She was like, Kathy, it's so amazing. And she used some expletives and she was like, I, I know you can't use that as a testimonial, but I wish you could. And I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> right? it's, it's like um, the curiosity of like, what does my project require now? Who could I add to it? Where could I go that's going to give me information for this project? What would it take to expand the project? How can I um, increase my money flows with this? What would the project like to be that I haven't even considered? Okay. Um, all of these different ideas, different qualities, different um, different questions and getting curious is, is powerful for allowing your business or project to grow. And similarly with communication, right? With 
Um, and and we'll we'll dive into your body even more because that I'm getting that. Hey, <laughs> let's focus more on the body with communication, right? If someone texts you or emails you, okay, well, what kind of what do they intend with that? Remember, sometimes there's no intonation in text and email, so we're getting like a little maybe rattled by something when we don't need to be because that's not what they intended. What do they mean by that, right? Or you can even ask, right? You're, first, you're asking your awareness, but you could also ask them, oh, what did you mean by that, right? Like I had this guy messenger me on my business thing, and he said, tell me about yourself. And I said, what's your intention behind that? Right. <laughs> if it's for a magazine article, that's one thing. But if it's just you want to you want to get to know me by messenger, uh, uh, no. Um. So so even in like if you're a body worker or a a coach or or someone who's in a room one on one or even even um you know um, well let me give the example first. So let's say someone says something that sounds a little bit sexual and you're slightly uncomfortable by it. You could ask, oh, what's your intention behind that? Right? Then that allows them an out, right? But maybe they didn't mean something so suggestive. Okay? Or, you know, it, it allows them to clarify. Like, yeah, this is a sexual intention. Okay. And then that that way you don't assume, right? So I've found in relationships, what do you mean by that? Is a really useful question. Yeah. That way I don't go into assumption. I get more clarity. Oh, could you clarify what you mean? Or I'm not sure I get that. Could you say it a different way? Okay. That also lets the other person know you seek to understand, right? You, you seek to understand. You want to hear them. You are listening. Okay. Um, like I do energy work on a lot of people, and, and sometimes it's distance, sometimes it's in person. And you know, if I ask, oh, you did say your right knee, didn't you? That helps them also feel heard, okay? Living in the question, getting curious, making sure, like um, asking to clarify just allows us to expand beyond our assumptions. Even if we double confirm something, you know, today I was supposed to have a session with someone and and they were like, well, I didn't have that. If I had double confirmed, if I said, hey, are we still on for tomorrow at, you know, whatever time? Oh, curiosity, just making sure. Yes, it's a go, not just assumption. Um, and a lot of times we have um, assumptions in relationships or even assumptions in regard to our goals. So I'll go to goals next, goals or targets. But um, another thing I like to ask in um, communication with others is what can they hear? What can this person hear? Because sometimes what I have to tell them isn't actually what they can hear or receive. And I'll go through it line by line. I'll be like, oh, can I, they hear this part? Yeah. Can they hear this part? No. Okay. Is is it the way I've worded it? No. Is it that I should, uh, if I disinclude this right now, it's going to work better? Yeah. Okay, just send the one line, and then maybe then when they re respond, then I say something else. Or, you know, it's always about what can they hear? What can they receive? What's going to create the greatest possibilities? And that's actually one of the things that I like to ask a lot, what's going to create the greatest possibilities? And that opens the door, because every time we ask a question, it opens the door to new possibilities. 
um, if I'm scheduling a client. Yeah, I had someone um, ask for a session this morning. Okay, what day is going to create the greatest possibilities? Maybe something will pop in my head. Maybe it's when I'm looking at the calendar and then I'm just looking and, oh, it looks like Thursday. Okay, let me check Thursday afternoon. Oh, today is Thursday. But <laughs> let me check Thursday afternoon. You know, how about would, would 2 o'clock? No. Would 4 o'clock? Yeah, that's what I'm uh, – 4 o'clock has a sense of lightness and possibility about it. Okay, let's schedule it then. Right? Um, so that sort of thing – is amazing where you're dancing in what's going to create the greatest possibilities here with this person, with this business, with my body, with my target, and, and work from that point of view. And continue to ask. And when you conclude, when you conclude, oh, that won't work, start to ask yourself, what if that's not so? What if that's not true? Right? Or I can't have that. Or I should have been there by now. Right? Conclusions. What if that weren't true? What would I choose? Okay. Questions allow us to get out of judgment. Out of judgment of life. Out of judgment of ourselves. They, like um, if you're doing something and you say, well, what's the gift in what I'm doing? What's the gift in this? It invites you to see that possibility. It invites you to see what the gift is, right? So when we're judging, we're in conclusion. When we're asking a question, we're in the curiosity of possibility, which always opens doors. So um, as we go to break, just start to tap into, like, what are some areas where I could start to ask more questions? And a great question is, what questions could I start to ask? What questions can I ask? All right, we'll be back in just a moment with Sexy Mom Abundant Life. You can always find me at iom.fm or meetkathywilliams.com. Thanks a bunch. The future of Internet radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free AscendingHearts.com Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. 
Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. This is Kathy Williams, and today we're having a conversation about being in curiosity, living from the question, and really living in the question and from the question is all about being curious, and there's an attitude of wonder there. I wonder. I wonder what it would be like to create this. I wonder what I could uh, um, do and be different in order to have more ease with this. Let's say you're having a problem in a relationship or a challenge with your website. I wonder what I could do and be to have more ease with this, to have more fun with it, to create greater possibilities. What energy would I have to be? Okay. And I'm looking at everything as a possibility instead of a wrongness. So if you're in judgment, if you, I mean, sorry, if you think there's a problem somewhere in your life, you're actually judging your life in that area. So you, um, because a, a problem is just a possibility with a judgment attached. So if you're looking at a problem, you can start to ask, okay, if I didn't perceive this as a problem, what would be possible? If I didn't perceive this as a problem, what would I choose? How would I do this differently or different? Yeah, who could I add or where can I get the information I require? Um, when we have targets or goals that we're not reaching, a lot of times it's because we have conclusions around them. Not always. Sometimes it's simply because we didn't take action, but sometimes it's because we have conclusions about how much work it would be, or, well, I'm not really good at that, or it hasn't happened for me yet, and it's been on my goal list for three years, so therefore, blah, 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 right? <laughs> so the first question is like, is this target even mine? And if not, cool, cross it out, choose something else. Or is it a modification on that? Let's say your goal is to write a book and you're really like, eh, no. That's not, oh, but I would like to write a magazine article or a um, column for a magazine. That sounds really fun for me, right? So it's a modification you'd still like to write, but it's, the, it's not showing up in exactly that way, right? So starting to get curious about those targets, like, is it really mine? Is it this, but not this, sort of this? <laughs> Um, also looking at like, what conclusions do I have about it? So for example, I became a bar instructor. That means like that exercise thing, um, bar that's a lot of work that's done with a ballet bar. And one of my conclusions was, oh, playlists are really hard to create. I'm not super interested in making playlists. And then I looked at that and I'm like, oh, what if it could be fun to create playlists? I wonder what kind of songs would be fun to have in my classes? Where could I find those those songs? That led me to, oh, well, someone else has a, a bar um, playlist that they sent to me, and I'm just kind of using a lot of their songs, but replacing the ones I don't love with other ones that have a, a similar beat. So it becomes more easy. I have more ease with it. So what would it take to have more ease with us. What actions would I have to take? What energy could I be? But looking at your targets and like, okay, what conclusions do I have here? And then even questioning those conclusions. What if that weren't so? Right? What if that 
actually weren't true. Or, oh, how, if, if you think it is actually true, how could I work around that? And then allowing your awareness to show you. And that awareness may not show you today, right? But you've asked, it may show you this week or sometime in the future, right? It's like when your awareness doesn't come right away, don't judge that, oh, gosh, I'm just not aware. And if you do, oh, what if that weren't so, right? What am I aware of? Where do I already use my awareness in amazing ways? Okay. Where have I used it in the past? Then you have evidence of it. So with targets or goals, you know, I run some masterminds that are actually one of my very favorite parts of the week. And, uh, and for the people in there too, um, you know, usually they're six months, but then people like to continue onward because we have such a tight knit little five person group you know, that, that feels supportive and juicy together and, and um, contribute to one another. And it's amazing how the, the, the synchronicity of what, what's up in one person's world is also up in the other. So, so that synergy that's built. And, um, you know, today as we were looking at targets, I said, okay, with these targets that you have, now start to look at all your conclusions about those and ask some questions and use whatever tools you have to let go of those conclusions so that what you would like can show up faster. And it's a really powerful process. So in all of this, in, in creating your, in, in choosing your targets, your body is involved, right? And one of the things that I think in the Western world we're not used to as much is having a conversation with our body. Like, okay, let's all do this. If, if you have a pain or a tension or a sensation in your body, like, hi, you know, talk to it. Hey, you know, what are you showing me? Okay. Is this mine actually? Like, am I carrying it for someone else? So my, my shoulder was bothering me. And when I asked, is it mine? I actually thought of two people. Right? And I realized, oh, both those people have left shoulders bothering them. Okay, cool. So I can let go, right? I don't have to send it back to them. I can just let go of anything I'm carrying for them. I don't need to carry that. And immediately, it softens, right? So. I'm going to find a new spot. Hi. <laughs> What's this showing me? What are you showing me? As though it's a friend. Getting curious. Oh. Okay. And if you don't get Im immediate information, well, body, what are you doing here? Okay. Is there another way of giving me this information? Okay. Is it truly my attention? You may become aware of, you know, oh, you were, you were weeding the garden or something, and that's what caused the tension. Right? Or I was working on someone, and the, the, I was in a funky position or something like that. Okay? Like, okay, body, and what do you require? Right? It's not in a, I'm trying to get rid of this tension, this tension should go. That's not curiosity. Right? It's, what do you require? And I got a, a sense of, oh, I require a little yoga, right? <laughs> Sometimes I teach yoga, but I don't actually, you know, do certain things in my everyday routine that maybe I could add, right? And, and it may be, okay, body, really show me what you require. And you're walking in the health food store and it's like aloe jumps out at you. Oh, body, is this what you require? Okay, cool. Aloe, awesome. Um, you know, or you get a sense of a place to go, or you get a sense of, oh, huh, for some reason, papaya is coming to mind. Right? You eat papaya and, and your body is getting what it requires, right? It's like, body, show me. Show me what kind of movement you would like to do. 
we we think we have to exercise, which is, uh, you know, we have certain ideas of what the exercise looks looks like, and that we have to do it a certain number of times a week. And all of that is actually judgment. And if you tap into, hey body, how would you like to move? Would you like to go to the gym? Maybe it would. Oh, I'd like to swim in the ocean, or or I'd like to, you know put on music every day for 20 minutes and dance it out. Whatever it is that allows you, your body, to have the movement it needs, and your body can show you just by asking. I have a role for, uh, that I see every once in a while because he's in San Francisco, and he said, Kathy, I think Pilates would be great for you. And I tapped into my body, and I was like, body, would you like to do Pilates? And it was like, eh, <laughs> contraction. And I was like, oh, okay. Then something came to mind. I didn't ask, well, what would you rather do? Although that's, that would be a question. I was just functioning from the curiosity. And I, you, when you're functioning from curiosity, you don't actually have to verbalize your question necessarily. And so I was functioning from the curiosity of, hey, would you like to do this? And once I asked that, I actually got, oh, my body would like to do gyrotonics. And gyrotonics is kind of like a circular Pilates. It feels really good to me and it can be really hard. It's a lot of work. Um, and I went and I did that for quite a few months. And funny, I ask now and it's like, no, I don't really want to go do gyrotonics. So you, know, so you can ask your body, body, show me, make it really clear. What would you like to eat? Make it really clear. Like what kind of what kind of nutrients do you require? Make it really clear. We're so used to functioning from our logical mind. We're not functioning from curiosity. We're not functioning from what our body knows. No, I should be eating. Yeah. <laughs> my my son got this uh, assignment from school, and it said this is the food pyramid. So every day you have to have the exact this exact number of like carbohydrates and and proteins and and dairy and fruits and vegetables. And so he created this this assignment of making that menu every single day for a week of breakfast, lunch, and din dinner. And all every day he made sure to get all the food groups. And then he took it in, and she was like, "Oh, you didn't do dairy on two days." Or you didn't do enough, it wasn't dairy on two days, it was enough dairy on two days, right? Like you were missing a serving. And it's like, is that actually what our bodies require? Or is that some superimposed idea from someone else's head of what your body needs, right? Does your body need dairy? I know a lot of people who just can't even eat dairy, right? They're not, their bodies don't like that, right? And so if they were to, eat dairy, like the recommended number of servings of dairy every day, they would actually get sicker because they can't digest that, right? And so it's like, where are we functioning from the conclusion instead of the question? And when you find yourself functioning from conclusion, don't make it wrong. Just, oh, okay, what question could I ask here? How could I get even more curious in this direction? Because there's always more curiosity to be had. There's always, you know, one of my favorite questions when I'm seeing someone I haven't for a long time or meeting someone new is like, what's the most interesting thing going on in your life right now? What a cool question, right? I mean, then, then that brings something that enlivens that person, whether that's their dog or whether they just published a play and it's going to be become, uh, you know, go on Broadway or whatever it is. It's like, what's the most interesting thing going on in your life? And for all of us, what can I choose now that's going to create the greatest possibilities in this project, in this relationship, with my body, with my kids? in life, with my finances? What can I choose now that's gonna create the greatest possibilities? What's available that I haven't considered yet, right? That's how we bought our, um, 
I think our fourth and fifth rental houses, it's like we bought it with that question of, okay, how else could we do this? What's possible that we haven't considered yet? And then we got ideas. And finally, it's going to be done. Oh, my gosh, it's been such a renovation project. It's taken like the whole year. <laughs> How could I have more ease with that? Right? All right. So thank you so much for watching Sexy Mom Abundant Life. I have a free money rain meditation for you uh, at meetcathywilliams.com. I'm also going to add a new um, fun opt-in on my website. It's not ready yet, but I just thought, ah. For those uh, people who um, already got that or are interested in something else that's fun, I'm going to add a new opt-in. So watch for that at meetcathywilliams.com. You can also join us in The Right Time, which is one of my very favorite programs because it gets people out of judgment and into getting their words on the page uh, at meetcathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. Thanks so much for being here. I love your questions, your comments. Send them in at meetcathywilliams.com and I'll be here next week. IOM.FM, Om Times Radio, or on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, all your favorite places and spaces. iHeartRadio. All right, have a great week. And if you can't wait that long, check out the replays and all those places as well. Aloha, everybody.